Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now, uh, today we'll be talking about how decision making is used in information systems uh, supported by computers and its infrastructure. Now, the discussion would be held in two parts. The first part would be on decision making and information systems. And the second part would be about business intelligence and business analytics. So let's go to the first part, decision making and information systems. So in this part, we would be uh, talking about the different kinds of decisions that would be able to be done in an organization in especially a company setting and about the process of making those decisions. And then of course, how do information systems support those decisions that managers are making? This is the first part. The second part would be on business intelligence and business analytics on how they support decision making and uh, what are the uh, context and the constituents of business intelligence. Now, uh, the first example here is on the use of uh, big data in uh, a soccer game in the World Cup. Now, you can imagine that in a soccer game, in a soccer competition, in a football competition, uh, the uh, uh, the, the, the abilities of players of each team are very close to each other. So it's very competitive. And people have been using new technologies to try to find out how their players perform and how each team performs. Now, in this example, uh, Germany uses optical recognition uh, of, uh, to enable the computer to find out what the players are doing. And for instance, they would, of course, uh, record the goals that a player would be uh, making. And not just that, but how many passes that are successful. If a player passes the ball to another player, how many times it meets the target, how many times it uh, doesn't meet the target, how far does a player run during the competition and the stamina of the player during the competition. And of course, every second, there would be new data coming in into the system. And then uh, it's called big data because every second there would be information on all 11 or let's say 22 players if they uh, uh, have shifts in playing the game. Now these metrics, are analyzed and then used to improve the ability of the player as well as the team. And of course, this kind of uh, analysis could be implemented in a business setting. Uh, in businesses, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands even of small decisions that are done each day in a large company. For instance, the decision to uh, give credit to a customer. The decision on what type of item of product would be uh, marketed to a customer and so on. And these small decisions make up uh, the annual value of the business. As you can see here, there are three types of decisions. There are unstructured, structured, and semi-structured decisions. The, uh, the structured ones are the most easy ones to put into the information systems because it's repetitive and routine. So meaning uh, that it's easy to develop a standard operating procedure. And you could also easily make uh, a formula for uh, this type of decision. Do this, if this happens, then you do that. If this happens, uh, then you do the other thing. Now, semi-structured decisions are decisions that uh, part of the problem is structured, part of it is unstructured. So part of it, you can make a procedure, the other one, you couldn't. 
what do you do with the unstructured ones? The unstructured ones, you would have to make judgments. You would have to uh, consider several things and consider the context, consider several variables, evaluate the condition of the customer, the condition of the environment, uh, and even use insight. Insight is kind of like a sixth sense to solve the problem. Now, uh, this is talking about the decision makers. There are three levels of decision makers and each level would be making different types of decisions, starting let's say from the operational managers. These are the people that are, are at the lowest level. These are the supervisors. These are the people that directly connect with the, uh, the employees. Uh, the decisions they make would be more structured decisions. For instance, uh, is a customer viable or feasible to be given a credit? So, uh, of course, there would be a certain protocol, a certain uh, standard operating procedure. You check the uh, monthly income of that person, the age of that person, the number, the amount of credit he is proposing and so on. The middle managers still make structured decisions, but some of them are unstructured ones. For instance, finding out why there is a certain decline in sales, for instance. Uh, the part where you find out how much decline is happening, that's structured. But trying to find out why it's happening, that's unstructured. And then for the senior managers, uh, they make unstructured decisions because the decisions might be uh, very broad. Uh, the decisions might need information from various sources and you can, uh, it's not possible to put into all those variables into the information system. For instance, when we consider entering a new market, whether it's a geographical market uh, now you're just opening uh, the market in Jogja and Central Java. You might be considering open the market in uh, East Java or in Kalimantan and so on. Or it might be uh, based on age. You're now catering for the older uh, aged people and you're thinking about marketing your product to uh, a younger generation. Should you do that or not? You might be thinking about uh, the uh, ability of the new market to buy a product. You might be thinking about cultural factors. You might be thinking about behavioral factors. So there are so many variables that you couldn't make a standard operating procedures. And uh, it's not something that you do routinely. You don't do it all the time. So it's not worthwhile to make a model, uh, to make uh, a formula for that problem. So that's why it's unstructured. And uh, this, there is a certain uh, type of decision-making tool used for this. For each type of managers, uh, for each level of managers, each level has different types of decisions they make, and there would be different information systems for those uh, decision makers. Here you can see, once again, the operational, middle, and senior management. And on the right side, you can see the types of decisions that they could be making, uh, like restocking inventory. You could make a formula, the economic order quantity, for instance, how many uh, is, how much is the iron stock uh, that should be remaining in the company when you order a certain inventory. It might be about uh, whether a worker is eligible for uh, doing overtime, because let's say you can make a formula that the maximum amount of working hours in a month is let's say 120 hours including the normal working day, uh, the normal uh, work, and uh, that, that's the normal work. They might be eligible for another extra 50 hours of overtime. How many overtime has a specific worker 
uh, been given. If it's 50, then he couldn't add more. If it's less than 50, he could. So it's quite simple to make a formula for this. While the unstructured decisions, uh, they would be harder to do. Like for instance, uh, approving a capital budget. Approving a, a, a budget, uh, this is easier. Developing a budget plan, because then you know the number of budget that you are allowed and the percentage of each type of budget, you can uh, come up with a formula for that, even though there would be some judgments here. But then approving the whole company's budget uh, would include uh, trying, to, uh, trying to guess or predict the amount of money that your uh, company will be getting in the next year. So it's much more uh, difficult and it's more unstructured. Here we can see the four stages of making decisions. First, uh, intelligence. Uh, intelligence, it's not uh, about uh, the ability to, to think, uh, some, not like that, but it's intelligence in the sense like uh, what a spy does. So discovering and identifying problems and understanding the problems that are happening in the organization. Then designing. Uh, design would be designing solutions to the problem that you have gathered during the intelligence stage and then choosing between those solutions and implementing the solutions, including trying to find out the activities that you have to do when you, uh, when you want to implement a certain type of solution and also monitoring how uh, the solution is done. And here you can see it in a diagrammatical form. Intelligence, go to design, but then you can go back to intelligence again if uh, it's deemed uh, not enough. Okay. And then every stage you can go back to the previous stage again until it fulfills the expected needs. Now, uh, here we see that in the classical model, there are five functions that a manager does. I'm sure that you are all aware of this. Planning, organizing, coordinating, deciding, and controlling. There might be different variations of the term that is used, but uh, these are best basically it. Now, a person called Minsberg found out that actually a manager does not do this in a very segmented way. And it seems that the information system cannot assist in the roles. They might be able to assist in the functions here, but not uh, be able to assist in all the roles that are uh, handed by managers. Okay, so you can see later on uh, Minsberg uh, would uh, has done a research on several CEOs of large companies, and he has been uh, recording, observing what they do from morning until evening for several days, and found out that the classical model is not done in a strict way. It's more jumbled. He might be doing some at the same time. He might not be seen doing a certain specific thing while he's doing it. So uh, it's not systematic, uh, more informal, not reflective, more reactive and, and not uh, well organized. For instance, uh, the manager might in the morning be having coffee and inviting some of these workers, some of his employees or her employees uh, for a chat. And during that chat, there's an element of planning and organizing. And then later on, or when he reads the morning newspaper, he might be gathering some intelligence. And then later on, uh, talking with his peers, with other managers, or maybe with uh, other employees, and doing some parts of this, okay? And Minsper observed that there are 10 managerial rules that is done by a manager. 
interpersonal roles, informational roles, and decisional roles. Now, the interpersonal roles would be roles that he would be communicating directly in contact with other people, like as a figurehead. Uh, this is a symbol of a company, like uh, the, uh, the deceased uh, Steve Jobs would be an icon of Apple. Uh, he would have been the figurehead of Apple. And of course, as uh, a useful information system would, be, would not be able to support that. Social media might be able to, but uh, not a formal information system, nor for the function as leader or license. But for the informational roles where a manager would be serving as a nerve center, which would be getting information from other people and then disseminating, sending out information that is needed by the company, or maybe being a spokesperson, uh, especially number four and five, this, this would be able to be supported by information systems. The decisional roles, okay, as an entrepreneur, okay, uh, this would be about risk taking, it would be about creativity. In the role of a risk taker, then he might be able to be supported because the information system might be able to give a, a suggestion of the how risky a certain uh, business decision is. But in terms of creativity, he wouldn't be able to be supported much by information systems. As resource allocator, he would be able because then the information system might help him decide on how to uh, spread the resources that he has. Okay. But not all 10 managerial roles could be supported by information systems, but uh, probably some of them. Now, when a company decides to invest in information technology, it seems that it might not always produce good results. It depends on at least three things. The quality of information. It might be uh, the precision, the accuracy, the validity of the decision. It might be the timeliness when uh, or how recent is the data, for instance. Is it new data? Is it old one? And so on. Uh, this would be affecting whether the information system would be producing good results or not. Management filters. So each person, each manager, has a specific attention that he likes to uh, look into. So a certain person might look more, uh, more preferably towards, uh, let's say, innovation. Another might be looking forward to technology. Another might be taking a look at the soft sides of uh, management and so on. So each has a different preference. Each manager might have biases uh, certain types of uh, preferences as well. So it might be uh, subjective then. And then there might be organizational politics and momentum. For instance, the optimal solution might be plan A, but because there are lots of resistance, because many people in the organization do not like that decision, uh, they might have to change to plan B or plan C, which is actually not really optimal, but because the, uh, of the resistance, then it has to be done. And then we have high velocity automated decision making. So these are uh, the types of decision that are done by uh, the computer and is done at a very fast pace. So the it's very obvious in the field of finance, in trading, uh, in, in, in terms of stock trading. Now, humans would need several hours to digest information, to find information on, uh, let's say, the foundation, the financial foundations of a company, uh, and the ups and downs of uh, the stock prices and market, the ups and downs of, uh, let's say, the uh, foreign exchange and so on. So there are many variables that you have to consider when you trade. But computers can do it very quickly. Even 
uh, having to make a decision in 30 milliseconds. So you can imagine uh, thousands of computers making, uh, doing trading every 30 milliseconds. And then of course it would change how the uh, stock market works. And if uh, all the computers say buy, buy or sell, sell, sell of a certain stock, then it might be uh, really uh, dropping the price of a certain uh, company stock or maybe increasing it suddenly. Uh, that's what happened in a flash crash. So of course there should be regulations, for instance, saying that if there's a 10, more than 10% downward spiral of a certain stock, then the stock market closes for that uh, stock. Okay. So uh, those are some of the issues that we face in uh, on decision making using information systems. And after this, we would be talking about business intelligence uh, systems, including business intelligence itself and business analytics.